This is the Web World Weekly. Here are your top trending tech stories. The original Apple One computer, designed by Steve Wozniak and Steve Jobs in his parents' garage way back in 1976, just sold for 500,000 euros at an auction in Germany. The buyer purchased the signed copy of the motherboard and is anonymous from Asia. Microsoft announced the release of the Xbox One this week. It's set to compete directly with Sony's PS4. What you'll find in both of the consoles is an x86 processor, which means when you're sitting at home watching TV, playing games, or using social media on the console, the chip inside there will be very similar to what you have in a PC or Mac at home. I'd love to show you a photo of what the PS4 looks like, but that's only going to be available to see at this year's E3 game show in the middle of June. What I can show you now is a photo of their latest gamepad. Oh. 83% of customers surveyed by PayPal in five countries confirmed they'd prefer to pay for things using a digital device such as their smartphone rather than having to open up their wallets. We met up with Halo Island earlier in the week just to find out how they are connecting to customers using these electronic forms of transactions. So you can pay with either cash or with card. Um, the easiest way is to put a card into your account. Uh, so you add the, the card details once on, onto your account in the app and then in future you don't need to have cash so you don't need to stop an ATM on a night out you don't need to remember to have cash with you at the end of the night. The drivers here were really ready to move on from the traditional model of uh, paying a, a weekly subscription to a, a radio service. Um, the taxi app, the driver app, is actually a, a very sophisticated tool that allows drivers to accept credit cards for all of the work that they do. So even if it isn't booked through the passenger Halo app, they can uh, process credit card journeys off the street. So it's features like that that allowed us to get the app into a lot of drivers' hands. And in terms of Halo, um, you know, I can see it's got a big presence over in the English-speaking world. I noticed that there is expansion happening to Spain. And are there any other territories where Halo will be moving into? Um, sure. So Halo launched in London in uh, November 2011, and Dublin was the first city to launch after that. Uh, since Dublin launched, Toronto, Boston, Chicago have launched. And um, just in the last couple of weeks, uh, Madrid has launched as well. Uh, Barcelona will be launching soon, and then New York is, is in the process of launching. Uh, Washington DC, Tokyo and, and you know many more cities after that. When we launched the app last July uh, we went out with a very kind of traditional PR approach and we also focused heavily on social media so uh, having an active Twitter and Facebook presence. We have over 225,000 downloads in, in Dublin uh, across iPhone and Android and we're over 5,000 drivers strong in, in the Dublin market as well so it's, it's done really really well here. So we're looking at launching Cork, Goy and Limerick over the summer uh, and that will be done centrally from our Dublin office. As you've seen by the success and growth of Halo Island, it's far easier today to reach your customers than it has ever been before. I met with CEO Richard Glynn from Studio Powwow just to find out why that is the case. You can make a relatively small investment in say an interactive book or a game and publish it on a mobile platform such as iOS or Android. and. Um, and you can test it out on your audience and your market and find out what they like, what characters they like, um, and, and, and through that you can let some characters go or develop other characters and develop your storylines direct to the consumer. You're hiring yes. a, a lead game developer and a game developer. Yeah. There are quite a broad range of technologies there that you know, the guys need to be skilled on for the job. What else do you look for uh, in, for someone to actually join your company? We're, we're a small team, we're a small unit, and um, we've all got to work really, really hard. We do a lot of multitasking as well because there's only a few of us. Um, so we've all got to get on very, very well. And um, uh, so cult a culture fit's a very important aspect when, when looking for both senior and junior game developers. What we do here is we create a transmedia story world first, and then we decide what platform to exploit it on. So what you do is you create a Bible or, or, or document which is able to tell you everything about the world, who the characters are, where the you know where their location, where they live, everything about them, um, and because it's quite a broad world that you've created, it doesn't matter what kind of media platform you create or spin out of that world. So a another thing that comes out of transmedia is transmedia storytelling, and that's basically a way of linking all the different media platforms that you're creating your your property on together, so that they all work seamlessly together. The first thing we did was we we decided to go for the NDRC, NDRC Launchpad, which is a, an accelerator program. We we pitched that around July last year, and we were successful to get on that. So we started that on the 10th of September. They gave us a small bit of microfunding, and they give you uh, desk space and mentoring. Uh, the Launchpad program goes on for about three months. We got a lot of really good support from there. I can't say enough good things about the guys up in the NDRC. And um, through Games Ireland, we ended up here, which is Game Space. And um, in in here we've been here since we've been here since February, 
and uh, again can't say enough good things about the guys in Games Ireland they've been great support as well. It's certainly encouraging to see the support structures available to young startups in Ireland working so well. That's it for this week's edition I'm Warren Gatchell logging off.